Sacred Stones is often said to be an easy Fire Emblem game. There's access to infinite level grinding, and certain powerful units can carry a playthrough with low effort. We're going to amp up the difficulty. I'll fully restrict myself from level grinding, and I'm going to limit myself to only using bad characters. Welcome to Fire Emblem Low Tiers. I'll explain what I mean by level grinding first, since it's simpler. I'll be avoiding any source of infinitely repeatable experience, including the Tower of Balmy, random encounters on the overworld map, arena battles, and boss abuse. It's more difficult to define what a bad character is for the purpose of doing this challenge run. There's no single definitive tier list for ranking the characters, and no easily defined cutoff point where you might consider a character to be low tier. Therefore, I'll be making detailed individual justifications on a unit-by-unit -unit basis on why I consider them to be suitable units for this challenge. Given the game's somewhat loose unit balance, and the number of units that are designed with level grinding in mind, we'll have enough units available to us to fill out a full army of mediocre characters. With the rules of the challenge set in place, we'll start on hard mode and begin with the prologue. Now, I've made a couple modifications to the game using community-made patches to improve the viewing experience. First off, units on the map display their health bars like Seth here, a feature seen in later games in the series. Secondly, the window in the top left when we hover over a unit has been updated to show me more stats beyond health, which means we won't need to open the stat window so often to do our mental math to devise our tactics. We also have a patch to display battle information like hit rate and damage in combat, even when the animations are turned off. Now, let's evaluate our units and determine if we'll be allowed to use them for our low tiers run. At first glance, Seth appears to fall into the Jagan archetype, an early game paladin with high starting stats and a strong weapon to carry your weak army to victory. While Jagan type units often have low growth rates to offset their early strength, Seth decided to have none of that, and has better average growths than nearly everyone else on the cast. Additionally, his status as a pre-promoted unit doesn't hold back his long-term potential as much as you might think, as Sacred Stones has a different experience scaling formula specifically for chapters 1 through 8 that somewhat diminishes the usual experience penalty he'd face for killing weaker units. He's actually quite capable of gaining levels in the early chapters, particularly if he gets the finishing blow on the boss, and his high growth rates means that he'll likely end up with a healthy balance of strength, speed, and defense in spades despite the fact that he has less levels to gain than the unpromoted units. As a result, Seth is very powerful over the course of the entire game, from prologue to final, and the Paladin class gives him a good degree of maneuverability and flexibility to augment his strong combat performance. For these reasons, Seth is often referred to as the best unit in the game and is far too powerful to be used in this challenge. Given that we're not allowed to use Seth, we're going to have to use Erica in order to beat the prologue. Since we're forced to use one of the two main characters regardless, I'm going to be using Erica since she's worse. Erica is notably weaker than her brother Ephraim. She starts out with poor damage and survivability, which is not a fun combination for a sword-locked unit that's going to have to close into close range in order to fight. Additionally, her low con stat can really limit her ability to effectively use steel swords for more damage. However, I wouldn't say that Erica is nearly as bad as many of the units we'll have to use for this challenge. She's fairly fast, her personal weapons are actually quite good, and she'll gain big chunks of stats when we finally get to promote her. With some dedicated training, we'll hopefully get Erica off of her feet. For now, Erica doesn't have enough health to survive more than one hit in combat, so I leave her in this choke point so she'll only engage a single enemy at a time. However, I've severely underestimated her bloodlust and she immediately crits this enemy, killing him, exposing her to danger from the enemy behind. If the next enemy hits me, I will have managed to lose my challenge on the very first turn of combat. Luckily, Erica decides to dodge and I am allowed to continue my run. Once I've finished the prologue, I'm going to be turning off the combat animations to shorten the lengths of the videos, since I'm not going to have very much to talk about while we watch all of these animations play out. The rest of the prologue is a simple matter of healing back up and having Erica duel the boss and, hopefully, getting a good level up.
After Erica takes down the boss, we gain our first level up of the challenge. We don't gain any strength or speed, so it'll just have to do. And with that, the prologue is completed, and we'll be moving on to Chapter 1. Now, we still only have Erica available to us because we haven't recruited any new units. We will be getting two more units on this chapter who will be joining us shortly. For the moment, I keep Erica sort of out of range. I only want her to engage a single enemy at a time because she's still at high risk of being killed in two hits. I had Seth give her the Steel Sword. She can't actually use it yet because her weapon rank isn't high enough, but hopefully, with more of these brutal murders, she'll gain enough weapon rank to be able to use Steel Sword shortly. Hey, that's a okay level up, I suppose. Would like some strength, though. Ah, our new units have arrived. Let's do some unit evaluations and see if we're allowed to use these units for this challenge. Franz is considered to be a fairly strong unit for a plethora of reasons. With some training, the average Franz will gain enough strength and speed to easily defeat enemies in one round, and the Cavalier class is very strong due to their maneuverability and flexibility on the battlefield. Not only can they move further than infantry units, they can use multiple weapon types to suit their needs. Additionally, all mounted units have an additional utility. They can easily ferry around your other units with their high aid stat, which is useful for tactics such as picking up and moving other units out of danger. As Franz has a good class, good availability, and promising room for growth if trained, he's too useful to be used in our low tiers challenge. Gilliam is the second unit we've obtained this playthrough who I would consider to be weak enough to be used in this challenge. Armor Knights have a frustrating paradox. Their defensive sturdy nature means they want to be placed firmly on the front line, but their restrictively low movement range makes them the worst at actually reaching the enemy. Additionally, Gilliam's too heavy that you usually pick up and ferry to the enemy of another unit. This makes it really annoying to use Gilliam effectively on maps where you need to advance on the enemy, which is most of them. While Gilliam's strength and defense are typically very high, his cripplingly low speed stat hampers his combat effectiveness on both ends. His general inability to double the enemy cuts his potential to deal damage in half, and his ability to tank damage can suffer if he gets doubled and has to weather twice the number of blows. However, I am expecting him to be both sturdy and reliable once trained up a bit. There's going to be far weaker units in our army than Gilliam. I send Gilliam to fight the soldier while sending Franz to the back corner in order to keep him out of danger. I don't want Seth or Franz to engage in any combat until the game allows me to not deploy them to chapters, so for now we'll just try and keep them out of harm's way. I keep Erica in the back so she doesn't get ganged up on my two different enemies and the enemy fighter actually chooses to go after Gilliam, presumably because of accuracy, instead of the higher damage potential on Erica. Well, this is a little bit awkward, but I think that I can keep Franz out of danger if we make him an unappealing target. I think that I'll have to lure out both of these fighters towards Gilliam, towards the right side of the map, to keep him away from Franz. I'd like to use Erica a little bit closer, but once again, two hits is enough to kill her. It takes me a couple seconds to devise my strategy since Gilliam doesn't actually have any healing, but Erica's carrying some on her so I can simply take it from her, trade, and heal up on this turn. Hopefully, both fighters will attack Gilliam. In order to ensure this, I'm going to move Franz onto the forest and have him equip his sword to make the enemy fighters very inaccurate, lowering the chance that they'll choose to attack him on enemy phase. Thankfully, my gambit pays off and the enemy decides to go after Gilliam, preserving the sanctity of my challenge. The rest of the chapter isn't very difficult. We're going to lure out enemies of Gilliam and have Erica clean up the stragglers while remaining at high HP. I do wish I could use Erica a little bit more aggressively, but I don't want to risk her taking multiple hits and dying instantly. I have Franz relinquish his remaining inventory, giving Erica and Gilliam backup weapons. Additionally, Erica has finally reached a high enough weapon rank in order to be able to use steel swords. Unfortunately, it does weigh her down by around 5 speed or so. I had considered putting Erica on the fort, but if all three enemies got very lucky and all three connected, she could have died, so I ended up playing it safe. I'll be giving her the experience from killing the boss regardless. Now, Gilliam had already gained speed earlier in the chapter, and he gets another one. Keep in mind, that's a 30% growth rate, and he has gone from 3 speed to 5. In fact, he had had enough speed to double the enemy soldiers whose heavy lances were taking him down to an effective 0 speed in battle. I use Erica to kill the boss because her rapier has tripled weapon damage against both armor knights and cavalry. 
While Erica is so fragile that she nearly dies in a single blow, she gets a critical hit and destroys the boss. Our efforts are rewarded with a new level, and Erica finally gains her first point of strength. We're getting somewhere. Well, nothing left to do but seize the gate, finish the chapter, and claim a reward. Thank you for watching.